those rights are gone when your child's in the public school system because there are students talking about these things. It's where they get 90% of their socialization for the day. That's the voice of an elementary school teacher who apparently believes that parental rights do end in the school parking lot. We'll talk about that. Plus, this week we hear from Ian Pryor, a Fox News contributor and the leader of the Fight for Schools Parental Rights Group. He shares the real story of what's happening in Loudoun County and what it means for upcoming elections. Welcome to Speak Up Virginia, equipping you to speak up on the life, family, and freedom issues that matter most to you. From the Family Foundation, I'm your host, Candy Cushman, with our grassroots manager, Eli Osborne. Well, before we get started today, I just have to vent a little bit about the fact that I think the squirrels in my backyard are totally out of control. In fact, I think they're taking over. Oh, no. Yeah, because someone gave me this sweet little gift of a bird feeder. It has suction cups on the back, and you can stick it on your kitchen window and yeah. have a nice view of all the birds. We've gotten bluebirds, redbirds. It's been awesome. But the other day I came home, and it was hanging diagonal, and I thought, wow, we must have had a lot of birds um, well, then I hear a continued racket while I'm trying to work upstairs, and I go down there, and I, I look through the window, and it was like a crime scene in action, because I see a chipmunk on the ground getting whatever's left, and I see a squirrel on the railing kind of frozen. Oh, my. Well, I, in the, yeah. yeah, he's I, just kind of froze. I can see it, yeah, like a crime scene. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, it was a crime scene. Yeah. So I walk out there. I have to get a ladder and everything, because I'm not tall enough to reach the bird feeder. <laughs> it was a whole big thing, and I was mad because they were interrupting my work. So I walk out there and just all these squirrels just scatter among my feet like they were all in the plot. And I just, I lost my temper. I was mad at them and I yelled, yeah, you better run. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure your neighbors across the way listening to that probably was thinking, what in the world is going on over there? Yeah, I'm sure they think I'm a disturbed person. Now I'm out there just screaming at the squirrels in the backyard. Well, I, I certainly understand that. The squirrels here in Richmond are certainly very comfortable. Um, we got some really nice patio furniture for Christmas. And after getting it put together within a couple days, um, Laura and I looked out the window and there was a whole host of squirrels um, just <laughs> chewing nuts and leaving their leaving their mess right on the couch. They're the making themselves couch. at home, sitting on the couch. Oh, yeah. Having a nice snack. Oh, yeah, exactly. And yeah. so I looked outside the other day, and it was exactly what you had said. I have a nice little display where I have a little American flag hanging out of it. <laughs> I found a squirrel completely in just its tail up in the air, and it was chewing nuts in my little display <laughs> and popped up and was like, oh, no. <laughs> I've been caught. So they are very comfortable around here, yeah, I guess. I think they secretly think they own Virginia. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, diving right into today's topics, we still have a lot of news coming out from Loudoun County. And really, it's about what's becoming known as the Loudoun County Mafia, tongue in cheek, you yeah. know, but they really, I think, are starting to deserve this name. And that, we just thought it would be a great time to share with you this wonderful talk at one of our events given by Ian Pryor, the leader of Fight for Schools. And he just shared a, a great story about how he started out as a dad who hardly ever voted in local elections. And now he's found himself at the center, really at the front lines of one of the hottest school board battles in the nation. But before we hear from Ian Pryor, uh, there's been even more developments yeah, coming so, out of Loudoun County, right? Yes, yes. It's just crazy. If, if you remember last week, we had mentioned a story from a local uh, ABC television station that uncovered all this. So essentially, there's a whistleblower that revealed intimidating, even violent posts that included a target list of over 100 people. So this was allegedly done by the ironically named Loudon Love Warriors. So if you just if you just sat on that name for a minute, the Loudon Love Warriors have a target list of over 100 people, including an entire church pastored by Gary Hamrick, pastor of Cornerstone Chapel. So I, I just can't believe we're to this point for people speaking up at a school board or they're expressing their conservative values, they're now being put on a target list by the, quote, loud and love warriors. This has even resulted in the Attorney General, Jason Mieres, announcing that his office is monitoring this situation. Yeah, it's still got to be investigated. These yeah. are allegations coming out of a whistleblower, like you said, covered by this local television station. But I do think it's interesting. It's now yeah. got the attention of the Attorney General. But let's just listen to what Pastor Hamrick had to say in response. Yes, yes. Some of you have been harmed by this group, and here's, here's my take on it. Um, this is middle school nonsense. 
the members of Cornerstone prayed for protection. Jesus told us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. So let's do that. Lord, we, we just give this group to you. We don't know everything about them and who's behind it all, but um, we give them to you and we pray that you would deal with them. And uh, Father, we pray that you would protect us, protect those on the list. Well, I'm glad we have the pastor modeling for us all the example to put into practice what Jesus said about we need to pray for our enemies and even those who persecute us. We need to yeah. pray for them. So that's good to see. But at the same time that all this is going on, we have this kind of doxing attempts or doxing threads trying to intimidate people into silence cropping up in other school districts. Tell us what's going on right now in Virginia Beach. Yeah, I think this was even the very week that this whole Loudon Love Warrior story came out, that after 100 people had spoken on a transgender issue resolution in Virginia Beach, a left-wing activist stood up in response and had this to say. The school board has received many hate-filled emails about this resolution. I sent a FOIA request this morning to identify the people who were dumb enough to put their bigotry into the public record for the world to see, incl including but not limited to their employers. As a business owner employer, I would certainly like to know if I had homophobic and transphobic employees working um, and interacting with my clients. All right, let's camp out here just a moment and think about what she's saying. She said the people who were dumb enough to put their bigotry into the public record for the world to see, including but not limited to their own employers. Those are her words, and I think the implications are clear. There's an implied threat there. It's an attempt to put fear in the hearts of people. Yeah. And really, when you look at all this pattern in districts um, across the state where people are starting to think, oh, if we can't win by logic or in the courts will just scare people into silence that's really the purpose of yeah. making a comment like that yeah you're, you're you're exactly right and it's i can't believe that that's that that's where they they've taken this extreme to but anyway let's um let's hear some excerpts from ian Pryor's talk uh, but real quick i do want to just mention to the youtube listeners that we did have a little lighting issue and we had recorded this at dusk, it was late in the yeah. evening, didn't have a whole lot of real good lighting, but I really think if you can overlook that, you'll find this really insightful and still a very inspiring talk. So let's hear from Ian. Oh, and I should just mention real quick, hang on to the end because we do have an inconceivable for you. So just um, let's hear from Ian and stay on for the end. Yeah, Loudoun County. You know, I feel like I've, I've talked about it to death, but it really is, is a story that is important as we move forward, not just in 2021, but also in 2023. And, and just a little bit about sort of my evolution here, because in some ways it's embarrassing. I worked at the NRCC in 2013 and 14. I worked at American Crossroads in 2015 and 16, and the Department of Justice in 2017 and 2018. I lived I lived in Alexandria, but I worked in Washington, D.C. Yet I didn't vote in local elections. I voted for governor, I voted for midterms, I voted for president, but I didn't vote in local elections. I, I just wasn't paying attention to it. We moved to Loudoun County in 2018. I voted in the 2018 election, but again, I didn't vote in the 2019 election. I thought, ah, oh, you know, local politics, you know, it's not a top of the ticket race. I just wasn't paying attention. And I even had a neighbor um, who at the time came over, she was a friend, and she was talking about the books that were coming into the library at Loudoun County Public schools. And at the time I had a kindergartner, she's telling me all about this, and I listened, and I thought, oh, yeah, it's not going to be in kindergarten, I'll, I'll worry about that later. <laughs> and just kind of ignored it. Um, and it wasn't until, as many people will, will attest to, the, the pandemic, where I started to see some, some strange things, right? I mean, right after the George Floyd riot in particular, just the people in the community and in the neighborhoods, the way they were speaking about things just started to get concerned. Concerning, right? If you are not with them 100%, well, then you're an insurrectionist, you're a racist, you're a Nazi, you're a horrible person. And it just, I just something was wrong with that. Um, a girl said something inappropriate when she was 15, not in a malicious way, still not something you want to say. But somebody saved that, and for three years they held on to it until she went to the University of Tennessee on a cheerleading scholarship. And then they got her cheerleading scholarship revoked and she had to leave the school. But this all happened in 2020. 
Um, and so I, I just started doing a little research and, and what, what's going on in the schools? I started seeing that this is happening in the schools. And it, it concerned me that this kind of cancel culture um, where you, you can't speak your mind, you can't express yourself, you can't advocate for your children or, or for your views would be met with this kind of behavior and activity. Um, so what I found was, I, I did a quick FOIA, I found you know, really a lot of interesting things about how our local NAACP sort of gaslit a story and got an equity consultant in there and paid him half a million dollars, and then we're off to the races with equity in Loudoun County Public Schools. So I wrote a story about that on The Federalist in October of 2020 and promised myself that I was never not going to vote in an election again. <laughs> Fast forward to 2021, I thought, you know, Maybe I'm just gonna have to pull my kids, and, and I, I don't know what I was gonna do, but um, that's that's when things really took a turn in Loudoun County and, and woke everybody up. And, and I call it really the first inflection point. And that's when you had a private Facebook group called the Anti-Racist Parents of Loudoun County um, that decided they wanted to create a list of people who they were going to publicly expose, infiltrate their groups, hack their websites. And those people just happened to be the 60 or 70 people that went to go speak at school board meetings for things like opening schools, or related to the books issue or related to critical race theory. The irony is that you know they got infiltrated, they got publicly exposed, and then we were off to the races because the school board, six members of the school board were in that group. Our Loudoun, Co our Loudoun Co County Commonwealth Attorney, Buda Bibberai, was in that group. A member of the Board of Supervisors, Julie Briskman, made famous for flipping off Trump's motorcade in, in 2018 or 17, was in that group. And they they said nothing. They didn't leave the group, they didn't denounce the group, they didn't apologize, they said nothing. And that right there told me everything I need to know. These people are influenced by this group. This group has ties to the elected officials. This is how they operate. This is how this pressure from these radical leftists to our elected officials, either our elected officials are too scared to do the right thing or they're right on board with them. So we started our petition to remove school board members. It started getting a lot of traction. And then right when you know we thought, well, maybe this is gonna start petering out, a teacher goes and speaks at a school board meeting about the policy that would say, you have to refer to a student by their preferred pronouns or you will face discipline, along with the bathrooms, the transgender bathrooms, um, parental consent, all of that. Same with Tanner Cross, he gave a speech, it was a proposed policy, and that same group went on the attack, flooded the school system with emails and phone calls, explicitly said we need to create a disruption at an elementary school to get this guy suspended or kept on suspension, and then the school suspended him. And it just kept building and you realize these, these elected officials, they are not serving our people. Like they are not doing their job. They have a political agenda that is all that they care about. And we, and me by not voting, elected them. Right? So Tanner Cross fortunately wins his case. He wins it at the Virginia Supreme Court, but it just kept building. You know, as Victoria talked about, the people that were at that June 22nd, 2021 meeting, there was 250 people just signed up to speak. Now that meeting got closed down. They didn't let people back in illegally, which they, they lost that FOIA case. Um, but we didn't know really what, what happened at that meeting or what it was about or really the importance of that meeting. We didn't find out until October of 2021 when there was a, a report of a sexual assault at Broad Run High School. And that's when it all came out that, well, there had been a sexual assault in May at a different high school. It was the same kid. The superintendent knew about it. The school board knew about it. The superintendent was asked about sexual assaults in the bathrooms at the June 22nd meeting, and he lied about it to pass a transgender policy. That was the third inflection point, and that was where I think everybody started to wake up. All but the most dogmatic people started to wake up. And 
And I think that was sort of the final piece of, or final pour of gasoline on the fire that led to the success in 2021, where people just realized these far left elected officials that we put in office are not concerned with their job. They're not concerned with keeping students safe. They're not concerned with academics. They're not concerned with representing their constituency. They're concerned with their political agendas. So we had great success in, in, in 2021. Obviously, Governor Youngkin, Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears, Attorney General Jason Miares, that ripened into an investigation and into a grand jury report and indictments of our former superintendent and our school spokesperson for perjury. The guy who's supposed to communicate to the public honestly was indicted for perjury. And fortunately, we, we were able to come out of the 2022 special election for two of our school board seats with a Republican in, in probably the most Democrat district. Um, but it, it, it doesn't matter if we don't win in 2023. I mean, we're seeing it right now. You would think in Loudoun County, of all places, they'd start to dial back, you know, maybe a little bit of a strategic retreat and say, what we've been doing hasn't been working. Let's figure out a way to, to kind of move to the middle a little bit. No, they're not. They haven't done anything. They haven't made any changes. They haven't um, tried to compromise at all. They don't care that Yunkin's governor. They don't care that uh, Attorney General Miar is, is, is the chief law enforcement officer. What they know is they've got a backstop in the Senate. So nothing is going to happen that they have to do. But it gets worse. And this is, this is my fear. And this is why it is so important that we win in 2023. If we don't win, that is going to empower the very same actors that are pushing this radical agenda forward. And not just the elected officials, but they're, they're ground warriors. They're people in the community that are influencing them, that have oversized influence. And I'm not talking about paid people. I'm talking about the people in your neighborhoods that believe that a boy can be a girl and that if you don't accept it, you are genociding people. The kind of talk that leads to very scary things. That kind of rhetoric can lead to violence. And it is continuing to happening. The elected, continue to happen. The elected officials are endorsing it, they're accepting it, and they're empowering it. And if we don't, they're going to say, you know what, all, everything that happened in 2021, it doesn't matter because we still hold power. We still have a mandate to do whatever we want. Now, I'm going to close with this because this is actually happening tonight in Loudoun County. It was on ABC at, at, at 6, and it's going to be on ABC again at 11, and I predict this story is going to make national headlines. Yet another private group in Loudoun County called the Loudoun Love Warriors, which includes the staff member for the chair of our school board, a um, field organizer for our Commonwealth attorney, a political consultant for our Democrat candidate for sheriff, um, several other people that volunteer for our Democrat candidates, board of supervisors, school board, etc. Well, they were caught targeting parents for speaking at school board meetings. But it wasn't the kind of targeting that we saw in 2021 where they were just talking about it. I'm going to read you some of the things that they've said. And it's really pretty shocking. Let's make him unemployable by love or force. I want to contact his employer to do just that, ruin his livelihood. I want every single person who clapped for that ousted en masse and their livelihoods ruined. This is somebody who spoke at a school board meeting. And this is what they are doing. And the law, the elected officials are supporting them. If we don't win in 2023, these are the people that are going to have the ears of your legislators. They're going to have the ability to influence laws. We cannot let that happen. Well, Ian gave us a really sobering and timely warning there about the upcoming elections because every person in our House of Delegates and the Senate in the General Assembly will be up for election. And he was talking about how that's not going to just impact what's going on at the state and federal levels. He talked about how that trickles down to the environment right. in our neighborhood. What did you think of what he was saying about that? Right. Yeah. I, I like this comment about how this cancel culture environment can go down to where if your neighbor, if you don't go along with what your neighbor thinks that a biological boy can become a, become a girl, 
then very quickly they think that you're committing this genocidal uh, this genocidal effort in the community. Well, now you don't have trust between neighbors, and it, the, the, uh, we continue to see the escalation yeah. that we were talking about earlier with this. Yeah, and people aren't just thinking that way automatically. They are being led to think that right. that you not agreeing with them is the equivalent of, of violence, violence. Right. and it's just really accelerating into actually making the environment scary. So, yeah, I thought that was a really powerful point. Yes, yes, it, yes, it was a good argument, really. Well, along those lines, one thing you can do to help that's positive is just get the word out about our report card that we just put out, and you can find this easily at familyfoundation.org. Just look for the banner on the website. You'll see a big banner there. And what this is, is a scorecard on how your representative voted on key issues on the life, family, and freedom issues over the last couple of years. And this is just a great way to help educate your neighbor, you know, your family members, your church members. It's bipartisan. You can just offer them information. If you want to know how this person voted on a key parental rights issue, this is a great way to educate yourself on that. So again, that's our report card at familyfoundation.org. Well, it's that time again. Time for our Inconceivable Moments Award. This is where we're featuring examples of the absolute lunacy and craziness that happens when cultural leaders try to give guidance completely apart from biblical principles. And we're calling this the Liberals' Most Inconceivable Moments Award. Inconceivable! Well, we've been talking a lot today about the impact that cancel culture has on our local communities. And we received a pretty good reminder and really a wake-up call that even communities in red states are not immune to this phenomenon. Right. And it's a story developing out in Florida. And all I can say is it's just kind of this bizarre mix involving a Disney movie shown in a school classroom, a woke educator, and really just total contempt for parental rights. You, Bring us up to speed, Eli. You're exactly right. So essentially this all started when a parent of a 10-year-old, this woman also happens to be a school board member, she objected to her 10-year-old being shown the film the Disney film, Strange World, during class time without her permission. So later, after this objection was made, the school district apparently sent out an announcement home to parents that read in part, quote, while not the main plot of the movie, parts of the story involves a male character having and expressing feelings for another male character. In the future, this movie will not be shown, close quote. Quite the statement, Candy. Yeah, and I just have to say, this movie, when it came out, it was celebrated as one of the first Disney movies, I think maybe the first Disney animation right. movie to have an out gay character You're with right. a significant storyline. He, he develops a crush on another male character. But, you know, I was thinking about this movie totally flopped at the box office. Yep. So apparently, if parents can decide, you know, elect to not take their kid to the box office because they don't want to sexualize a sexualized agenda during a fun cartoon movie with their kid, right. they're still going to have it shown maybe in their school classrooms. Without any knowledge, with no, right. without prior notice. You just with, are forced to. <laughs> well, the teacher didn't seem to appreciate this concern involving 10-year-olds and parents' feelings about it, so she pretty much took to CNN to vent. Oh, my. Let's just listen to that. Yeah. She's missing, and what these parents are missing is they're not in the school system. That that just shows me that she's ignorant and has not come and volunteered at all. Because our, these conversations, these doors, they're open. These students have one-to-one -one devices. The amount of things that they're able to pull up that we have to shut down, they, they, these conversations, these doors that she's talking about, that's t telling me I'm stripping her rights as a parent, those rights are gone when your child's in the public school system because there are students talking about these things. It's where they get 90% of their socialization for the day and we can't shut down every conversation every child has so here you have again another educator saying the quiet part out loud basically parents rights end at the school parking lot she even went as far on cnn to say that people with these concerns are ignorant yeah so i i, I have i have a hard time believing that people are still struggling with understanding why parents are choosing homeschooling and other private school options exactly I thought another point that she seemed to be making was interesting. She seems to be trying to make this argument that because kids are in school socializing with other kids more than they are at home, and also because they already have digital devices, they have access to movies and digital right. devices outside the home, mm -hmm. that these two things mean that you forfeit your parental rights when they come in the school building. I just, I thought, well, okay, that's kind of an interesting argument. 
So. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like the idea that just because they're away from the home that now all of a sudden yeah. the values of the home aren't important and now you just have to accept these social these these social standards of what the rest of the world believes. Now you have to accept that in the school system as well. Well, it's kind of this same old argument we hear, well, it's already out there in the culture. They're getting it everywhere right. else. So we should have free reign to talk about it whether you like it or Let's not. Let's use class time the, to do it. Yeah, that's kind <laughs> of the argument. Exactly. No, you're right. Well, I guess that means this week's inconceivable award will go to the Florida public school teacher that had to remind us that the average leftist believes that our concerns are, quote, ignorant. Yep. All right. Well, I just want to remind everyone, you can check us out on our Speak Up Virginia playlist. Just go to the YouTube channel for Family Foundation. Make sure you subscribe to that playlist, share it with friends. And remember, we are stronger when we speak together.